Even after roughly four years, the smartwatch world is still in search of its perfect device. And while this isn't it, it gets a lot closer than I expected. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is the Samsung Gear S2 Review Rebuttal. It's a rebuttal because it's not a full review. Our official review already went up a few months back, courtesy of our own Jules Wong, and it's one we still stand behind. But after using an S2 loaner myself as part of our trial of AT&T's number sync feature, I had a few additional thoughts of my own. One thing I'll say, having strapped on both the standard and classic editions of this watch at both IFA and CES, this one is a fair bit beefier. That's because this is the 3G variant, which is over two millimeters thicker than the Bluetooth only model, and its white band and bright metal casing make every bit of that added height very visible. So if you're in the market for one of these, be sure and take note of which one you're looking at. The added bulk will be worth it to you though if you often find yourself separated from your smartphone. During my testing, I left my phone at home several times while going out on the town with the Gear S2, and because the watch could connect independently to AT&T's network, I could still make voice calls, send and receive text messages, and check the news. Samsung deserves a lot of credit, first for being willing to strike off on its own direction with the design, and second, for being willing to abandon its previous design language. While 2014's Gear S was a cumbersome cuff, the Gear S2 is actually quite attractive. More than that, it's innovative. I get the same feeling from using the rotating bezel as I did using Apple's digital crown. Namely, why didn't somebody think of this sooner? The spinning bezel is something that's been built into many watches for decades, and it makes all the sense in the world to put it to work as a software switch on the S2. The Tizen-based software is as zippy as you can ask for, and its high-contrast iconography is just gorgeous on the 1.2-inch AMOLED screen. That said, using the S2's software takes some getting used to. In addition to the bezel, you've got two hardware buttons on the side, plus a touchscreen with its own set of gestures to learn. Not to draw another comparison to the Cupertino competition, but constantly switching back and forth between the various interface methods mirrors the kind of muddled UX I encountered on the Apple Watch. Also, some basic watch functions, like the timer and stopwatch, are buried deep in the app menu, which makes getting to them a little cumbersome. Fortunately, there's a shortcut. You can set the home button to jump directly to a specific app with the double click. Features like that are all over the Gear S2 software, actually, and it takes a while to uncover them all. Holding down the home button lets you power the watch off, but it also gives you access to power saving mode which switches the watch to grayscale and powers down most of its functions to help you last a little longer if you forgot your charger. The charger, by the way, is a very cool magnetic pedestal that uses Qi wireless charging. Swiping down on the watch face is a lot like doing so on an Android phone. It gets you a connection screen as well as do not disturb settings and other system toggles. These are all great features to have, but again, it feels sort of like a whole smartphone has been crammed onto your wrist. No matter how good the interface is, that's a lot of stuff to squeeze into a tiny little display, and so the S2 feels pretty crowded the more you try to do with it. One of my favorite features is, weirdly, in text messaging. Yeah, it's nice to be able to dictate messages on Pebble and Android Wear watches, and you can do it here too, but when you don't want to talk, you can type. Samsung has built in a T9-style keyboard here, which is fantastic if you grew up sending SMSs with a numeric keypad on a dumb phone. If you didn't, well, there's always the emoticons. The Gear S2 isn't quite a slam dunk. Like most smartwatches, I think it's fairly overpriced, though AT&T does offer various promotions to bring that cost down, including a current offer to get a free S2 with a qualifying Galaxy smartphone purchase. The fact that it syncs with Samsung's Gear app means third-party app installs are a little more complex than on, say, Android Wear. And while it's supposed to work with most modern Android phones, you'll have to take your chances if you can't find your model on Samsung's already outdated compatibility list. But as a companion to a newly purchased Galaxy smartphone, or a change of pace from the stark simplicity of Android Wear, the Gear S2 will please those already sold on the smartwatch as a category. And as an indication of what Samsung can do when it chooses to innovate rather than replicate, it's a genuine success story. Our full Gear S2 review is available at pocketnow.com, and while you're there, be sure to check out our written coverage on AT&T Numbers Sync. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.